so let me, let me make this easy. And we don't have time for this conversation. Um, and you guys are going to get be really shocked, because this time I'm going to shut up. I'd be shocked. <laughs> He's got so much to say, and I want you to hear it all. Um, have you enjoyed this so far? Yeah. Biggest airline in the world. Most profitable airline in the world. Wealthiest airline in the world. Happiest airline in the world. In the busiest airport in the world. In the ATL. <laughs> Biggest employer in Georgia, I believe. Yeah. Um, and he's a nice guy. Um, this is my brother of another mother. Amen. Amen. See, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an honorary brother. He's an amen. <laughs> There's so much to unpack here. Yeah. Um, I remember you called me before the pandemic. And you had planned on hitting the mark of profitability with your, that you set with your board. And you wanted to do something novel, take profits above the number you hit to make Wall Street comfortable, expectations, what you told analysts. And anything you hit above that, if your employees helped you hit above that, you wanted to share that with your employees and profit sharing. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to actually go on CNBC, you and I did it together, to announce a number. And I figured, okay, it's 50 million or something. You know, it's a respectable number. My band's like, no, it's a billion dollars. <laughs> then the next year, we did it on Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. it was $2 billion. <laughs> Profit sharing. To the I'm talking about line workers. I'm talking about, the, I'm talking about the flight attendants. I'm talking about the ramp workers. You want to know why Delta people are so smart? So <laughs> <laughs> right over here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because nobody washes rental cars. Because people felt they were part of this. There is another model other than frustrated, my mother was part of a union, frustrating union workers thinking that they're in conflict with their employer. That is a description for failure. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand. That's right. You cannot be in, in lock, you cannot be in battle with your partner and expect to succeed. We'll always be in Mandarin in 10 years if that is what we, how we behave. There is a country trying to be us. They want your way of life. There are two countries, Russia, they, they luckily have shot themselves in the foot, quite literally, and China. They want to be you. They can't win on a fair fight. They got to cheat at capitalism. They got to get us to fight against us. Everybody wants to be an American but Americans. So it's true. we got to figure out how can we be better together. Mm -hmm. And what Ed did, I'm not sure if you did it in conscience. I know my friend Pete Stavros at uh, KKR also has this sort of profit sharing model. He had this model where, look, you, we are the same team. Let me, as we succeed, let you succeed too, so that all boats rise. That's right. Then what happened during the pandemic, when everybody else had all these problems and had to lay people off, you couldn't do profit sharing because there were no profits, mm -hmm. but your employees didn't, they're like, we're with you. Mm -hmm. And they took voluntary, what is it called? Voluntary leaves of absence. Furloughs, right? Yeah, yeah uh, without, without pay, yeah. Without, without pay, mm -hmm. for two years. Mm -hmm. And when uh, the pandemic began to ease up, look, I just you can't make this up. The pandemic begins to ease up, and we start turning the corner of the economy. The employees then come back, mm -hmm. rally with you, yep. and it was the most profitable airline reentry in the history of the, the pandemic and in the modern history of America. They rallied back with him. And there's and one one thing to that, John. The other thing you have to add on to that. We did not furlough a single employee during the pandemic. Not one. Only airline that can say that. And, uh, and this, this, this last thing I'll say now, I'm going to try to shut up. No, you're doing good. <laughs> These are the best kind of interviews. So, so, so you called me. I remember I was 9 p.m. 
I think it was a Tuesday. I'm in Peachtree City. I'm turning, I know exactly, I was turning a corner. You called me, uh, John, I, I, need, I need to run something by you. You talked to this person, talked to that person. You were really tore up about this issue of the vote. And you said, and I'm going to paraphrase, I was sitting with some legislators. They, they mean well, but they have a different sort of view of the world. And I'm trying to make a bad bill less bad. Mm -hmm. And you talk to some of your minority employees. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of them, Pe women, people of color, people who are you know, in some underserved group. And after you talked to them, you said, John, I realized I can't just make a bad bill less bad. I got to make a good bill better, or, or, or I got to stand up for what a but bill, good bill would look like because the, and, and I, I want you to say the quote, because I, I can't be as eloquent as you. You said the right to vote is? It's sacred. Did you hear that? The right to vote is sacred. So, so he asked me my opinion. I gave him my opinion. I thought it was actually, uh, you know, a basic thing that we should not be uh, debatable or controversial. So he comes out and he gets a bunch of crap about it from it from some people. He holds his ground. I can't say gotta get into detail. He holds his ground, and here comes a hundred CEOs right behind him, saying, "I'm with you, Ed." I'm with you, Ed. I'm with you, Ed. And they all stand up for the right to vote for those who are unseen and unheard. These are the things and decisions that nobody sees behind closed doors that makes a great leader truly worthy of the love that he's going to get today. You are truly a special human being. Thank you, my friend. You stand up. You call, the only time you call me every year is to come to a fundraiser to help with cancer research because your brother had cancer, right. has, well, he's- For he's childhood got, cancer, yeah. Yeah, and, and children who's had, who's had cancer. Yeah. It, what did I miss? And why is all this important to be CEO? And then I wanna get to what we're doing together, which is really important. Well, first, first of all, this? thank you uh, for that and thank you all for, for being here. I think this is probably like the sixth or seventh year in a row that I've been on stage with you, and I hope you just have my permanent time slot for the next uh, the next decade uh, laid in, because I love coming here. Ed is my, my easiest yes. And I, love, <laughs> and I love seeing the mission grow and prosper and expand and impact uh, our country and impact the world eventually. Uh, one of the things that Delta that we hold dear is our people and taking care of our people. And it's one of the things that our founder almost 100 years ago said when he founded Delta Airlines. If you take care of your people, they in turn will take care of your customers who will enable the company to grow and build and create prosperity. Yeah. That's the model, taking care of your own first. Yeah. Not taking care of someone else, taking care of your own. Yeah. And the 100,000 people of Delta Airlines are who I obsess on all day long, every day, in terms of what we can do to enable their success, to their, for their wellness, both financially as well as physically, for the tools to do a great job, the technology needed, the innovation, the reliability of the product and the service levels to keep customers happy and coming back. And they're the very best at hospitality, they're the very best at service within the airline industry. So everything that you mentioned about Delta is true, but it's true for one reason. It's not true because of me, it's true because of us, mm. and all 100,000 of us that make a difference. And Yes, absolutely. And is that also why you thought that the right to vote was such an easy thing to be for? Well, it's easy to be for, but it's hard to stand up when no one else is standing up, Yeah. right? And so there was no way I could, I could let, that, let that go. Um, and everyone was looking candidly at me. And if, if Delta wasn't going to say something, if I wasn't going to say something, I think we'd be in a diff different time today. Uh, and we, 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 got, we got our message across. We got it, we got it across. It was, it was a hard message, but it was the right message. And done with and, decency and respect and for everybody. And done with decency and respect for everyone, everyone trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And then we continue to, to work on it, we yeah. continue to make progress. And that's, that's the only way. So getting back to your, your beginning question about why we're here and about our people yeah. with respect to wellness and taking good care of them. 
Uh, the profit sharing is, is it's incredible, and you know, we're, we're back this year, by the way, we will come this Valentine's Day, have another billion dollars this year with oh, our well. people. So I tell everybody, Valentine's Day is the best day to fly Delta, because everybody's happy, everybody's in, a, in good spirit. And, uh, and if you're a, you're a car dealer in town, or if you have something you're selling, you, you want to be putting your best, best sales out Valentine's the week after. Day, the, the week after Valentine's Day, because our people, people are out shopping. So yeah. it'll, be, it'll, it'll, it, be a good, it'll be a good week. And by the way, if you have a mobile application for employment, my guess is the numbers are going up about right now. Exactly. The, 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 by, working at Delta. But when we, when we think about the pandemic and what it did to us, what it illuminated was the fact that we needed to take better care of our wellness. Yep. And obviously physical was, was prominent because of the virus, but it was far deeper than that. Yep. You know, the, 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 that was one thing that we had to fight. But wellness you know, touched on our emotional wellness and well-being. And we've seen, we saw it during that crisis and we've seen the aftermath of that crisis about what the damage it, it laid on communities, on individuals, on families. Yep. Uh, our social well-being and our, our, our ability to, to feel comfortable you know, within our communities and also our financial well-being. Mm -hmm. And I said that we, we, we did a great job, I thought our team did the very best job we could do with the physical well-being, with the vaccinations, with the, the, the blocking the middle seats throughout the pandemic, with ensuring that the cabin environment, the airport environment, the cleanest that you could ever find. But we had so many underlying causes that were also needed to be tended to. Mm. And I think a bedrock to a lot of this is financial insecurity. Mm. And when we talk about the facts that one in four Americans have no ability to withstand any kind of financial emergency at all, we talk about 50% of Americans don't have $1,000 that they could put their hands on today in the event of a financial emergency and the, the amount of stress that creates and the amount of insecurity that sits at the core of it. I said, I do not want, I can't solve that for the world, but I can solve that for Delta Airlines, for the 100,000 people mm. of Delta Airlines and hopefully the, get the movement going amongst other corporations and other responsible citizens in the world to make certain that we're tackling it from a business standpoint, not just you know, a community standpoint or a nonprofit standpoint or a government standpoint. Mm -hmm. Businesses have the resources to make a difference and businesses need to stand up and do something about that. And so we launched, thank you, we launched at the start of, start, at the program last year, I announced that we we're gonna be doing something yeah. about that, introducing this financial uh, training and literacy program in concert with Operation Hope. And uh, we launched in January and I'm proud to say that we've already had 30,000 people sign up. Now we got 100,000, 30%, 30,000 30, 30, people to do something and take action is meaningful and it's still less than a year in. Over 20,000 have already completed the program and have received the emergency funds, which is $1,000 of, of that. There's, there, there's strings attached only in that we ask people to sign up to take online literacy courses to help them better manage work on a wellness, financial wellness track with a coach. And once they complete that track, the $1,000 is there on sending. And the results, and Kelly Elliott, who, who manages this program within Delta, is gonna come up after this, and she's gonna talk from the specifics. But we released a white paper uh, in concert with this, this, uh, this uh, program you're, you're holding uh, this week to announce the impact that's had on our people, and it's phenomenal. Over 50% of the respondents that have taken it said they've had substantial improvements in their overall feeling of security, their financial security. They've all started to contribute to, to their own emergency savings fund. So it's not just a handout, it's very much a hand up mm. in trying to get things going. Yeah. And I think the average participant has contributed out of his or her own funds $1,000 on top of our $1,000 and starting to make a real difference in terms of their ability to control and manage the future. And we're just getting started. It's pretty, pretty cool. The, the, other, th the other thing, we, our, our people over the course of this year have participated in over three and a half million hours of financial literacy training. I don't think there's anything that I've ever heard of that you've had that size of impact on individuals, all voluntary. Three and a half, million, three and a half million hours. hours. Three and a half million hours. 
and over 37,000 sessions with a financial coach. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? So, so uh, <laughs> do you guys understand what you just heard? This is the biggest airline in the world. They took my little irritation and needling and took it seriously. They, Joanne Smith, the global HR officer, who's jo Joanne, God bless you, um, and her team embedded this. I want to give Fidelity credit as well because that's where they domicile the mm -hmm. 401k money. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they, the, they said, well, we're going to give our employees a, a, cha a choice. Go to Operation Hope and Fidelity or Fidel and take the financial literacy coursework. And when you do, when you complete that, You'll get a $1,000 emergency savings account that's all yours. What other employer does this? And uh, they launched this in January, as he said. Uh, they thought for the whole year you'd have, what, 20,000 people? Probably, yeah. For the whole year. They hit that mark in, within oh, a yeah. quarter. Within the first three or four months, over 20,000 had signed up, yeah. And now I can't get on an airline I, every time I get on an airline, half of the crew are, 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 are like, would you like an extra Coke? I mean, they, they all love this program. I mean, I, it's making me cry. People giving me care packages and writing notes on it and saying that this changed their life. The guy telling me that him and his wife, flight attendant, are no longer arguing. I'm trying not to get emotional. This guy came to me, it's a black man. I mean, it's, it takes a lot for him to be vulnerable. Yeah. And he said, my wife and I are not arguing anymore about money. We argued all the time. It was destroying our relationship. This, it, it solved so many problems. We didn't understand that this was just, we didn't know what we didn't know. We were smart in other areas, just not in money. Yeah. And then the thousand dollars was enough to pay some critical bills that took the, took the pain off. There's another lady, I can't mention her name, but she, you know, she takes me when I show up at the airport, she, and she's like, you know, I was taking care of my sister and whatever, and I had to, I had to tell my sister, I love you, but you got to take care of yourself. That's right. And 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 she start, she start paying off her credit cards and 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 pay and and putting some money aside, and 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 now, her, her the lights on, her self esteem is up, her her shoulders are back, she's she's back, yeah, she's back, yeah. I mean, this is, it's just changing people's lives. If your day's not about God or love, your day's about money. Real talk. And when you remove the stress of somebody financially, you change their lives. Amen. And for Delta Airlines to do this, and then I just mentioned casually to Joanne, maybe we should do a report on this. You guys to issue a, a report on the report. impacts of this, which are just, I understand, unbelievable. This will be the first corporation in the history of America to issue a report on financial well-being, and I'm proud to say it features Operation Hope. Absolutely. Well, financial, financial well-being is at the core, as you mentioned, of so many challenges in today's society, and we want to succeed, you know, it's, it's not just that we're doing the right thing, we're doing the smart thing, mm. right? Because we want our people to come and to continue to serve better and to perform better and to grow our business better and take more markets and more routes and more opportunities for the world. But if they can't show up yes. and be the best that they can be that day yes. because they're stressed out about something else, it doesn't, you know, it, it just, it's, a, it's, it's unfulfilling. So our opportunity to do what is, would appear to be the right thing, to me, is also the smart thing. And it's the strategic thing. And that's where it's not a hand up. Or it's a hand, it's not a hand out, it's a hand up. Because to get the $1,000, we'll put 750 in, but you get the other 250 once you put 250 of your own money in, and then we'll match it dollar for dollar. So they're already starting out with 1250 yeah. Even though wow. it's a thousand, right? Twelve fifty. Just to continue to, to get that process started, and then you know we have a four hundred one k program with that we we provide three percent upfront, and then dollar for dollar match for the next six percent 
of their of their of their contributions mm. in. That's and so money. it takes, you know, it just takes a few years before you start building generational wealth. Some generational wealth and you start changing outcomes mm. for the long term, which is which is what we're all about here. And and I mean it is true that 95% I mean, of all employees stressed out about money on the job. I mean, we, people are ashamed to admit this. Can, can I get an amen? Amen. I mean, 70% of us are living from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, half of those making $100,000 a year are living from paycheck to paycheck. A quarter of those who make $250,000 a year are living from paycheck to paycheck. I'm not talking about poor people. I'm talking about you. And if you live in, Mar in Manhattan and you make $100,000 a year, it feels like $39,000 a year. Mm -hmm. But we're ashamed to have this conversation. And, 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 it, cor and it corrodes your self-esteem. It corrodes your confidence. It corrodes your joy. And if I don't like me, I'm not going to like you. If I don't feel good about me, I'm not going to feel good about you. If I don't respect me, I'm not going to respect you. If I don't love me, I don't have a clue how to love you. And here's the big one. If I don't have a purpose in my life, I'm going to make your life a living hell. Whatever goes around, comes around. Ed knows this. Ed, Ed travels on these planes, and I, I get notes from people who like un embarrassed because they're in first class, and, and Ed's in coach. Like, Ed will get on the plane and go right to the back. And he, 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 he's just chilling. You guys know what chilling means? It's, it's a lot more fun back there. It's a lot more fun back there. That's where all the real people are. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want this audience to know? What, what I, the reason I, I celebrate you, in fact, this is the fact, other than the fact that I genuinely like you as a human being, we spend time together, we, we, we go to dinner together, you know, our families uh, know each other, I helped your... I think it was a test, by the way. I helped your daughter uh, with something that she yeah. needed some help with. It's not, just, it's not just struggling people to need help. Ed's daughter needed some assistance as well. Uh, she, 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 she aced it like a star. Um, I still think it was a test. But, uh, but not only to celebrate you as a human being, it, but I do believe that we need heroes and, and sheroes in business today. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing that you got to be, a, in order to be a capitalist, you got to be a jerk is a lie. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I, the reason I celebrate people like you is I want folks to understand there's decency yeah. in the C-suite. And you can do well and do good at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, and, and not only can you, you have to. Because what are we trying to do with leadership? We're trying to create followership. We're mm. trying to create people that continue to make a difference towards their purpose collectively, not individually. And you need a leader that has authenticity and transparency to be able to tell the truth and to be able to be vulnerable at times, because we also don't have all the answers. And it was, again, never more prevalent than the pandemic, where none of us knew what the heck was going on around us. All we knew is that we needed to hold on to each other to get through and hold step on. through. And this year, in 2023, three years removed from when we were just flat on our back, Delta will have its highest revenues in its history because of the leadership that the company displayed taking great care of people. So thank you all for that. So uh, we are wrapping this up. I could talk to, to Ed uh, all day. He's got an airline uh, to run. He's got he's, a plane to catch. He's got a plane to catch. I'm going out to Utah. Are you going to Utah? I got a big employee event there. Um, but uh, every time I call you, you answer the phone. Answer this, this last question. We're done. Every time I call you, answer the phone. When I don't call you, you call. Uh, you, you, you say, I'm, I'm on board for the next year. Every time we do this forum, you, you link me to uh, the UPS CEO. You link me to this person, that person. You're always answering. Your, your brother tells me when he had cancer, you called him every single day. Give one message of optimism for this audience about being able to multitask, has heart and head. Give them some piece, some nugget of wisdom to walk away from. Well, I, I love your, your theme. We talked about, John asked me about the theme earlier in the year, what, what would the theme of this conference should be, and I love where you landed in terms of optimism, reason for optimism. There is so much strife. There's so much divisiveness. There's so many people saying that you can't. We need to create people who say we can and that we will and that we will make certain that our generations to come 
will be in a far better place than anything that we've ever seen. And that's the thing that gets me going. I, I, I'm not doing this because I need to continue to, to run an airline. I'm doing this because I'm trying to impact a future generation within, within our company, within our community. And you have a lot of leaders that are embrace you, John, and Operation Hope. And I look at your lineup of speakers, and I remember what, when I first came uh, six, seven years ago, and it was good then, but it's great now. And I think it's a testament to people who believe and making a difference and holding, holding each other accountable and then providing each other support. And, when you, and you know, the great thing about support is when you don't care who gets the credit, that's when magic occurs, right? Ladies and gentlemen. He's a great man. Ed Bastion. Love you, man. Love you, too. Before you go anywhere, Kelly Elliott, who's the woman I referenced who helped lead us with Operation Hope and Fidelity to create this program, is going to come up for a few minutes and provide some additional details about the success this program has. And you're going to want to listen to it. So, Kelly, come out on stage. Oh, hey, Kelly. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good morning, you, Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, everybody. I'm really excited about this opportunity to take a few minutes and just go into a little bit more detail about what John and Ed just talked about. You know, they really challenged us to take their vision, take their vision and carry it forward. It was no easy task, admittedly. Uh, it's something that we did very quickly, and I'm really proud of the work that we've done. So they referenced two stats at the beginning of their talk. One in four Americans doesn't have an emergency savings account. 57% couldn't cover a $1,000 emergency. That's something that we knew we had to take action on at Delta because we are no different. Our people are no different. It's been a hard three to four years for us. You heard Ed talk about what the company's been through and what our people have been through and what they have done to really help the airline come through this. So we knew we needed to help them. We measured our well-being. We, we measured not only financial well-being, but we measured physical, emotional, and social well-being. And what we found was the greatest opportunity was in the financial well-being space. We also heard from people, what were their two biggest concerns? Number one was lack of emergency savings. Number two was preparing for retirement. So with that, that information, that hard data, and the vision from Ed and John, we put this program together. And we're thrilled to share it with you because we don't want to just keep this as something that Delta does. We want it to be something that many employers, many organizations take to their people. Think about the difference that we can make. So how does it work? First things first, employees need to select a path. We have three different paths of education because we know not everybody needs the same thing. Some people might be focused on their credit score. Others might be focused on getting a mortgage, buying the first house. Others are planning for retirement or even going further, planning to uh, estate planning so they can carry this wealth forward. So we created many different paths of edu education because we wanted to meet people where they were. It needed to make an impact. It can't just be a one-size-fits-all approach. So we took different, different layers. Next, they create their emergency savings account. So they go and start an account, a rainy day fund, as we call it, um, and they set a payroll deduction. What's most important about that is that payroll deduction is permanent and they stick with it. We tell them, start small, start $5 if you have to. Start small and increase it. Just get started. Finally, they, they start the education and the coaching program. This isn't just about giving people money, this is about setting them up for the future. So they start their coaching program, their education program. Um, we didn't think it could just be education. Online education is helpful. Mind you, it's important. But that one-to-one -one coaching relationship was really, really important. Um, I think Penny talked about it earlier. She talked about this human-centered approach. That one-on-one -on -one coaching, creating trust in that um, was absolutely critical. So we worked with Operation Hope, Hope Inside the Workplace. We have coaches across our entire system um, meeting with our employees one-on-one, -on -one, building trust. We also have Fidelity coaches who help us with that as well. We think that's building trust in the financial system broadly, but also confidence. I mean, these employees are building their own confidence so they can focus on their financial future. And then Ed and John, of course, mentioned, when they go through this and they take the steps, we will make a $1,000 contribution for them for a total of 1250. 
we are really changing the trend that exists for our 100,000 employees, and we really want to see others do that. So a year end, how's it going? We almost have a year behind our belts, and we have some real hard data to support why this has been a great investment for us. Often for wellness programs, it's really hard to measure the ROI. So us putting the time in to measure the ROI has been really important because we want to keep making these types of investments. Um, we have heard from our individuals that we are making a difference. We are truly changing lives. Loretta Day, I want to tell you a little bit about Loretta Day. She's actually here with us in the audience today. Woo, so happy to have you. She is an Atlanta-based flight attendant with Delta Airlines. She's a phenomenal um, cheerleader for our program. I talked to her and she told me about how she didn't really grow up learning to save. It just wasn't something she was taught. It wasn't something she talked about in her community. She was living in the moment. She was living for the day. She wasn't thinking about how do I set up my financial future. She ended up with 16 credit cards and a mountain of debt from spending money on very expensive items. And so she finally took action. She got involved in our program. She met with a coach. She got her finances in order. And I have a few quotes that were very impactful to me that I wanted to read. This program gave me all the tools I needed to prepare myself and my family for a strong financial future. It is the best thing the company has ever done for me. Wow. I wish other companies would do the same. Think of the impact that that would have. So thank you, Loretta. Thank you for being here. And thank Good you enough. for... <laughs> Thank you for being our biggest cheerleader. John talks about going on the airplane and talking with our flight attendants. Loretta is, would be your favorite. I mean, she is out there telling everybody about this. She's advocating for others. And she wanted to be here today to be a part of this as well. Um, and we're hearing stories like this all the time. They're countless. But it, the hard numbers really speak to this. 21,000 people have completed their coaching and earned their $1,000. Thank you. 33,000 people have started an emergency savings account with, on average, 1,061 balance that they've contributed themselves. That is, I mean, that's changing the trends. And the majority are frontline hourly employees. Yes, our pilots participate. Yes, our management teams participate. But the, most, the majority are frontline hourly employees that are changing their day-to-day -day trajectory. Some of the other results that um, Ed and John mentioned where we look at an assessment at the beginning and the end. How are they feeling about their finances? The one that speaks, speaks to me the most is that we are seeing a 62% increase in the sense of financial control. That's, good. That's, that's really the biggest one. So we've released this white paper, which is what we have alluded to, and we have many, many results in there. We released it today thanks to the vision of Ed and John and Joanne. Thank you. We... Um, we will be leaving handouts on your tables at lunch so you can learn more about the program. We also have a, a deltafinancialwellness.com. Please go look at it. Look at it for your organizations. Consider how you can get started. It doesn't have to be $1,000. There's many other ways of doing this, even if it's just a payroll deduction to an emergency savings plan to get people started. So I want to say thank you to Ed and John for pushing us to really take these steps on this unique and trailblazing program. I want to say thank you to my Delta team for all the hard work um, that you have put into this. And of course, thank you to the Operation Hope team who has really helped us lead uh, with the coaching that they've provided. Um, we think we've made a huge impact and we can't wait to see how we can take this forward. So thank you, John, for letting me have the floor. We appreciate it. So I don't, I, I, can, I can fully accept, thank you so much. I can fully accept that you don't really understand it's probably hard to comprehend the impact of what just happened. You know, when you go to a concert, it's, you know, it's a two hour event, it's full of excitement, you're riled up, you go to a rock, you know, you go to a rap show or you go, you do something, it's episodic. This is, uh, okay, it's a report. It's a program. I need you to understand this. This is what healthcare was 50 years ago. 50 years ago, Healthcare was not a normal in a corporation. 60 years ago, people looked at you like you were crazy. Today, you go to a company and they don't have healthcare, 
you think the health, the company's crazy. <laughs> Every pioneering thing begins somewhere. And what you just heard today was the biggest, most profitable, most successful airline in the world said that a program that came from a minority serving, underserved organization lit up their data in such a way as being compelling and hit their business plan as additive and prescriptive to the future and other big companies should do it.